Hello everyone! I hope you are excited because today we are talking about something very exciting. I'm going to be doing a review of a tarot deck. In particular, we are going to be talking about this deck. This is the box. This is the Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian C. Wild. In case we are not yet acquainted, my name is Carrie. I have not put a YouTube video up in a hot minute. It's been a while. So if you know me only from YouTube, um, I am still around. I did not disappear. I still blog pretty regularly. I'm still on Instagram pretty regularly. But again, it's been a bit since I put out a video. But since I'm doing a deck review, I figured video is really the best format for a deck review. In the spirit of full disclosure, I will let you know that I was sent a copy of this deck by the creator, Jillian C. Wild. However, I already had this deck on my wish list, so I would have purchased it at some point down the line. Um, I had been seeing images of this deck on Instagram and I was intrigued. I thought it looked like something that might be right up my alley. I am going to give you my honest opinion on this deck. There are a lot of things I like about this deck. We'll talk about that. There's a few things I'm not so fond of with this deck, so we'll talk about those as well. And let's go ahead and jump straight in and look at some cards, because that's what you're here for, right? Let's start by talking about the box. I am a big fan of decks that offer both form and function, and I'm very particular about boxes. This is a pretty sturdy box, as you can hopefully tell by looking at it. This is important to me because I am often hauling my decks around in a bag, and a flimsy cardboard box just is not going to cut it. So this is a box that could withstand at least a little bit of a beating, which is always nice. And then of course you get a taste right off the bat for the overall aesthetic of the deck just looking at this box. So the deck is very nature-based, lots of animal imagery, and the deck also incorporates quite a bit of sacred geometry, and it incorporates some elemental imagery and a bit of astrological imagery as well. So this is something that I wouldn't necessarily say it's like a complaint, it's not something that really bothers me, but I love the starkness of the box, and I find it a little bit at odds with what you actually see in the cards. So I'll show you some more of the cards in a moment, but you can get an overall impression of them here. I hope that's in focus. Let me try and make sure. Yeah, you can get an overall impression of what the cards look like here. So the cards are actually very light in their background. Most of them have a lot of white space whereas the deck has this like rich, dark color in it. And I actually, I kind of like this dark aesthetic more than I like the white aesthetic. And it all goes together, but that's just maybe like a stray observation that I have about the deck. Right now, this box is empty because I have the cards out waiting to show you, but I'll just give you an idea. Um, again, it's a nice box. It has the ribbon, so it's easy to pull your cards out. Beautiful imagery of the suit iconography in here and a little quote from the deck creator. Okay, let's set this box aside and take a look more at the contents. So the first thing you would notice when you opened, again, let me make sure my camera's focusing. Sorry guys, I haven't used this camera in a while. Okay, the first thing you will find when you open the box is this guidebook. So it's fairly small, as you can see by the size of my hand. However, there is a lot in it. Like look at, look at how many pages this contains. I'm pretty impressed with this guidebook. This guidebook, I think, has just the right level of detail that if someone who was not really familiar with tarot, who was just starting out, got this deck, I think you could get a pretty good start just using this guidebook alone. Here is a peek at the table of contents just to give you a feel for how much is covered in this short but powerful and actually, it's, I shouldn't even say short, because when you consider most little white books that come with a deck, this is, this is way bigger. So there's some substantial information here. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at some cards. So these are just a few random cards to give you a feel for what the art looks like. And as I am showing you these cards, let's talk a little bit about this, the backing on the cardstock. So this backing has been designed by Jillian so that you can use it to actually create your own crystal grid. 
So if that's something you are into, if you work with crystals, you might find that an interesting aspect of this deck. It's something I've never seen before on a tarot deck. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I've never actually made a crystal grid in general, but now that I have this deck, I don't know, maybe I might have to give it a go. So again, these are just a few random cards I picked out just to give you a sampling of the art style. The art style itself, it reminds me of a few contemporary decks that I've worked with. Most notably, it reminds me a bit of the Lumina Tarot, and it also reminds me a little bit of the Wild Unknown Tarot. I like this art style. It's something that I vibe with. However, one thing that I wonder about with this aesthetic, especially because there's a lot of decks and things that have, I don't know if a similar aesthetic, but this kind of aesthetic with the line work and the white space and the geometry, it is kind of in fashion right now. So I do wonder how it will stand the test of time. I wonder if we'll look back on this deck in 10 years, 20 years, and think, oh my gosh, that's so 2018. I don't really know. I like it for now, so I'm not trying to sound like that's a complaint about the deck. It's just something that I think about with the deck. You may have also already noticed by now, but there is no human imagery in this deck. It is all nature-based. However, there are some objects that, you know, are remnants of humans. Like, of course, we have the hourglass here. I really like that because as time goes on, I'm less and less drawn to decks that have humans um, and more drawn to, to decks like this that have nature imagery, but I like having sort of the trace of a human, like objects that humans have created. I think that's kind of cool. Next I am going to lay out and make sure my camera focuses uh, a few of my favorite cards from the deck. So this is the Magician and I love this magician. I can't even really explain why. There's just something occult about it, yet also inviting about it, and I just really like this imagery for the magician. It has some of the traditional imagery that we're used to seeing in magician cards across various tarot decks, yes, yet it also feels fresh to me, so that's one of my favorites. This is the tower. It's a pretty classic description of the tower for the most part with the lightning, it reminds me a bit of the Wild Unknown with the tree. There's actually several things in this this deck that remind me of the Wild Unknown, um, but that's neither here nor there. This is the Four of Cups, and I picked this as one of my favorites just because I love pandas. I used to collect panda stuff when I was a little kid, and I just think that they're a cool animal. I mean, who doesn't love pandas? Three of Swords, another classic depiction yet with its own twist in this deck. I really like the rib cage. I also really like the way she designed the swords themselves, not only in this card, but in the entire suit of, of swords. And actually for that matter, I'll see if I can show you this one a little closer. Oh my goodness, I gotta get my camera. Sorry guys. Hopefully that's focusing. No, it's not. Okay, so this, in The Magician, you can see all of the icons for each of the suits. You can see the cup, the sword, the pentacle, and the wand, and I think they're all really cool looking in this deck. Four of Pentacles, I like, oh. Four of Pentacles, I love that depiction with the squirrel. Ace of Cups. This is just cool looking to me. I love the tentacle coming up. I love the burst of color here and then the black and white cup and I love the design on the cup. This is the sun. I thought that was kind of a cool way and it's sort of a unique way to depict that card. Ten of Cups. I mean who doesn't love crystals, right? But this card, this card is another example of why I said I wonder what we slash me will think of this deck in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years, because the art style with the crystals and the colors, it does seem very modern, very popular right now. So again, not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, just an observation. And then this is the Nine of Cups, beautiful. I also wanted to point out that 
the artist has incorporated elemental imagery into every one of the cards. So you'll notice at the top of every card, you have the elemental symbol. So obviously coordinating with the traditional associations of pentacles being earth element, wands, fire, cups, water, and swords, air. For the most part, this deck sticks to a fairly traditional interpretation of the tarot system. So if you're already familiar with tarot, you probably pick this deck up really easily. There are a few cards which have the titles changed. So this is titled the Sage here in the Naked Heart Tarot, which in most decks would be the hero font. This is, um, actually this one's a bonus card. So this is one of those decks that comes with a bonus card. So this is card 22, the Naked Heart. I might talk more about that in a second, but let me show you a couple others. This is titled Sky Father in this deck, and this would traditionally be the Emperor. Here we have the Earth Mother, and this would traditionally, of course, be the Empress. And then I think this is the only other one. This is the Universe, which in most decks would be the World. So I'll say a little bit more about this bonus card, and for me, I, I usually just end up taking bonus cards out of the deck. I have a few decks that have come with a bonus card, and I don't have anything against it. Sometimes it's cool, but I think it's just because I'm really used to the system of tarot being set up the way it is, and I feel like it's kind of complete the way it is. So if I do keep a extra card like this in, I usually just read it as kind of a wild card if it comes up in a reading. I haven't taken it out of this deck yet, but I also haven't yet had it come up when I'm doing readings with this deck, so we will see how that goes. I will trust my intuition in that moment. Let's talk about the court cards in this deck for a moment. So the titles used in the court cards are Child, Youth, Mother, and Father. I will say that for me, the child being associated with the page and the youth being associated with the knight has been a bit confusing for me at times. It might just be me, but the words child and youth are so similar. And as you can see, the imagery um, is somewhat similar as well, at least when you're first getting used to it with this, both having the circles and the wands that there's been a few times where I've had to question myself and say, okay, wait, is child page or is youth page? But I think I'm finally getting it now. Child is page, youth is knight, and then of course mother and father are pretty straightforward. In most decks, those would be the queen and the king. This deck also incorporates something which I've seen before, and it's not something that I normally use, but I get how it could be useful if you were into it. So you'll notice up here, I mentioned before, that the elemental sign is included for each card. In the court cards, each of them have the, the fire element, of course, since this is the suit of wands that I'm showing you, but you'll notice there's also another suit overlaid here. And so this is a thing, again, I've seen it before, but there is this concept that in general, the energy of a page or child is associated with earth energy. The energy of a knight or youth in this deck is associated with air. Mother is associated with water and father is associated with fire. So I get that. I think if you know a little bit about the elements and you know a little bit about the traditional views of each court ranking, it makes sense. But I think if you were a beginner, this might be a little bit confusing. And even for me, like, I get that system and I like it, but I don't really feel like I need it or necessarily want it in the imagery. However, it's really unimposing, so again, I don't have a problem with it, just an observation. Okay, I showed you some of my favorite cards, so it only makes sense that now I'm going to show you a few of the cards that are not so much my favorites. This is the Three of Wands, and I actually really like the imagery here, but, and it's not really similar to the Wild Unknown. I don't think she was going for the same vibe, but it reminds me of the imagery in the Wild Unknown to the extent that it throws me off a little bit when I draw this card, if that makes sense. Um, this one is the Seven of Cups, and 
I kind of get what the image is going for here, but for some reason it just makes me laugh every time I see it with that cloud around the giraffe's head. It's just, I don't know, it just doesn't quite hit it for me. This one I feel, okay, I like the strength card. I really do. It's just like maybe the perspective is a little weird to me. Like I'm like, where is this lion's back legs? So I hope I don't sound like an asshole. I really like this deck overall, but you know, with, with most decks, there's a few cards that you're like, mm, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. The star, I like it. I like how simple it is. I just wish maybe there was a little more there. The star is one of my favorite tarot cards in general, so I'm probably a bit picky about that one. This is Temperance. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a lot to say about it. It just didn't really hit it home for me. And then the Nine of Wands, same thing. Now, that said, even showing you some of the cards I don't like very much in this deck, I don't dislike any of them. I don't really hate any of them. It's just that they're not, they don't quite click for me. I'm just going to lay out the card, a few cards again, just to show you as I talk about a few last impressions. And it just started raining outside and it's kind of dark in here. So hopefully that's not too distracting. But the last couple of things I want to talk about are just to mostly about how it is to work with this deck, at least for me. And I will say, I have been getting some super, super awesome readings with this deck. You know, if you've been working with tarot for a while, you've probably experienced how every deck kind of has their own personality. And I feel like the personality of this deck is so loving and so warm, but it's not like saccharine. It's not like a Doreen Virtue level thing where it's sugarcoating things for you. This deck, I feel still tells me what I need to hear, but it does it with so much love and so much compassion. And it's been really spot on as well. Like the readings I've done for myself with this deck have always been so on point. So I think it reads really, really well. This is kind of a random time to mention this, but I forgot to talk about this earlier, which is that the cardstock is also really nice. It's not too shiny, it's not too matte, it shuffles well. And we all know if you've been working with tarot for a while, cardstock really is important. So I appreciate when a deck is made with quality and this deck is definitely made with quality. So there you have it. Those are some of my thoughts on the Naked Heart Tarot. If you have questions for me about this deck, you're welcome to leave a comment on the YouTube video or on my blog if you're watching this there. If you would like to purchase this deck for yourself, you can go to jilliancwild.com. I'll put a link in the description. That is the artist's website where you can buy the deck directly. It is an indie deck, by the way, if I didn't mention that earlier. It is also available on Amazon. So you can get this deck <laughs> shipped to you in two days if you have Amazon Prime. So I'll put a link to the Amazon page as well. Thank you for watching, and Jillian, if you happen to watch this yourself, I want to thank you for creating this deck. I think that the love and care and attention that the creator put into this deck is the reason I'm getting such good readings for this deck. It has a special energy, it has a really heartfelt energy, and I'm excited to continue working with this deck for a long time to come. So thank you again to everyone for being here and I will see you next time.